closer to this microphone. Jesus, okay. <laughs> I know I said that we didn't need like completely clear audio, but okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. How are you doing? I'm all right. It's warmer out than I keep expecting it to be. Yeah. Yes, it's horrible. We had a storm last night, which was nice. Oh, uh, delightful. That was delightful. Uh, so, yeah. But uh, today, it's the same shit. It's even worse than it was yesterday, so I'm like, Haha. thanks. <laughs> uh, do you want to introduce our lovely podcast? I think I can manage that. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie. That's Lily Kay. There's only two of us, so there's no more people after that. No. But, you know, we're enough. We're good. Yeah. We're great. Mm. Uh, yes, we're back. Uh, pre-recording because we are very professional and we have time <laughs> uh, so yeah we, uh, before 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 we get into today's uh, topic which is Katie's idea by the way so it's gonna mm. be very you can tell uh, when I start talking about it I think <laughs> yes, it, it tickled my brain I just good uh, I liked yes uh, we have to talk about uh, the comic con uh, announcements from Marvel uh at least just for like briefly uh because genuinely I, briefly <laughs> genuinely briefly, because i just want to say that i was right <laughs> i told you so that's the only reason she's bringing this up yes i waited for this for so long <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i ever at any point said <laughs> that you weren't correct again <laughs> i'm telling the people out there who thought that i wasn't correct i am correct it is the multiverse saga and it is going to be the secret force i was end. quite uh, I, was, I was very pleased when you pointed that out i kind of went oh okay yeah then you were very correct because i was like multiverse saga that feels implied but the secret wars thing that was that was on point well done thank you i'm so proud of myself <laughs> i was right that's gonna be the end game of these uh uh phase four and six uh and we got uh the official uh timeline uh for all the phases uh that we are getting uh and apparently phase four is ending with black panther uh wakanda forever and they released a trailer uh for it uh like officially as well because they released other trailers as well and we didn't get to see it i'm very sad i can't wait to show that uh to see the guardians of the galaxy trailer which uh, apparently features uh little little i can't talk <laughs> i can't talk Li little rocket raccoon yeah i saw that um james gunn said he wanted to finish the trilogy for rocket yeah and um my friend Charlotte's gonna be very pleased about that because she loves Rocket. I, I love Rocket. Rocket's a favorite. Well. But I, I'm horrified that he's gonna die because James Gunn literally said that. Yeah, not everyone is coming out of it alive. So I'm like, Haha. no. Well, <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Uh, but yes, uh, people at uh, the San Diego Comic Con got to see that uh, as well. But we got to see uh, the Wakanda Forever trailer, and it looks absolutely stunning. Um, it does. It genuinely does. I'm yeah. like, it's Ryan Coogler really is just like doing the most. I, oh, think. I know, right? It's like the music was on point. I was, oh, I, I love got... the way it went from from like the classic yeah. into the like. Oh, yeah. I was sitting there because when it started, I was like, oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> got more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I got goosebumps. I was like, oh, this is just okay, perfect, already perfect. And then, and then, uh, and then, and then, and then, and then. They showed the Chadwick, well, T'Challa uh, mural, and I was like, "Yep, tears." Really interesting way of putting a, a, a trailer together because we don't really have a sense of what who the movie's about. Yes, exactly. That's very sneaky, and I like it. <laughs> I like it too. I like it too because for a long time we just talked about this, but we, we are now officially talking about it on the podcast. Uh, the rumors were that it's gonna be Shuri who's uh, mm. stepping uh, in to be uh, Black Panther, but uh, I don't think that's true anymore. We both made the decision we quite like the idea of Okoye taking over. Yes. Oh my god, that would be so satisfying. And I said that Michael P. Jordan is coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, he's dead! That's the technology for that, okay? 
yet again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's stunning. It looks very promising. Uh, we saw a little little peek at Martin Freeman as well, to my delight. Because little tiny peek. Just a tiny peek. I just love that he's back. I, I love him as well. Uh, but like everything just looks so good in it. And I'm, I honestly can't wait till November uh, because that's that's when it's going on. But before that, we're going to get She-Hulk. Uh, yeah. yeah. I say bits of it like I'm like oh okay yeah sure and then other bits I'm like yeah I'm interested I'm, I would put it like this I'm interested in the story definitely. yeah the plot sounds fun and some yes. of the dialogue was was pretty yeah. was pretty fun yeah but ever, ever... It, it didn't improve the CGI no. I'm afraid uh... and and I said this to you but I want to very much clarify that we're not blaming the CGI houses for this oh, <laughs> I'm no, blaming no, Marvel no. <laughs> no. Uh, but uh, and and what's weird is that the hawk like looks all right and then yeah. she doesn't he and doesn't. i'm like how how do you manage that? i mean he doesn't look as good as he has done in the past but, but like he's but he still looks better than what they've done to her yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And it's kind of it, it, it you kind of do look at it, like tatiana manzani did not play like 15 roles in an orphan black feet to do this to her yeah it's still yeah weird very weird but uh there was a very nice prize in the end uh, of the trailer and we are both very happy because daredevil is back our okay. boy is back he's back <laughs> he's got a new suit and he's like yes so he's gonna rock our screens uh not just in this one but he's they announced so much stuff for him I, I love i'm so it. pleased i love it he's, he's also going to be in echo uh, mm -hmm. uh and then uh he's gonna get his own series again daredevil born again which is gonna be in phase five mm-hmm when is 2024. it? 2024. 2024 sometime. Yes. I think, yeah. It's, good. it's a while away, which is fine. Yeah. But I want, look, more than anything else, I just want them to take the time with stuff. Like, I just wish that Marvel would be like, actually, you know what? what? I kind of wish they'd stop giving dates for things. I don't know. Years. No, no, but like, it, when people have, it's the same thing with when video games get release dates. Yes. You end up putting the crunch on, 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 especially animators. Yeah. Um, so if they, I feel like if they gave us like a year, like all oh, these things we're expecting them to come out next year, I would be like, cool, sweet, fair. Mm. You don't have a, an expectation of when in the year a certain things are meant to be coming out at that point, point. and it means that they have a bit more wiggle room to move things around. But I mean, they can just push it back if they are not ready with something. I know, but and then they have um audience expectation on top of the this thing. Yeah, well. and they use that. That's always that's always gonna be there. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's um, I don't mind it. Uh, I do get your point, but I I don't mind it, uh, especially with movies. Like I like to know when when I should be prepared. Yeah, I mean, adventure. maybe I just think maybe like <laughs> because we're getting release dates that are so so far in advance. Yeah. If if it I I don't mind getting a release date for something like a couple of months in advance rather than just like maybe two years in advance. You know what I mean? But I mean, they are already shooting most of this. Like, Guardians is already yeah. like finished. Done. That's just true. Uh, uh, um, and the Marvels are are in production. Blade is in production as well. Iron yeah. Heart as well. Uh, it's not production that I worry about, though. It's post production. Yeah. You know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but let let's quickly run through Phase Five. We're gonna we're gonna start off with Ant Man and West. Uh, Quantumania in February mm -hmm. 2023 and then there comes Sin Secret Invasion which is I can't wait to see Amelia Clark enter uh, the Marvel Universe. What is Secret Invasion? Uh, it's when the scrolls take over. Oh right it's yeah that's the Nick, the Nick Fury, Fury thing. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. That's coming out in spring 2023 uh, then Guardians of the Galaxy on, in uh, May 5th uh, in 2023 uh, then in the summer we're getting Echo and Loki season 2 uh, we are also getting the Marvels which will feature Kamala and Monica's uh, uh, debut on the big screen and then in November we're getting Blade, uh, Marsha Ali quite like, uh, I really am look, quite looking forward to Blade <laughs> yes I know and then uh, during the fall we're getting Ironheart uh, during also the winter uh, we are getting Agatha Coven of Chaos. It sounds fun. What is that? Agatha. Oh, Agatha. Yes. Coven of Chaos. That's the, right. that's the other title. Yeah. And then in 2024, spring, we're getting Daredevil uh, uh, Born Again. 
and we are also getting Captain America, the new world order uh, with Sam Wilson. Uh, I'd like to make a formal statement to Hollywood Reporter. There's no, there's no question about whether or not other, you know, Chris is coming back as Captain America. He, he's, Sam Wilson's Captain America. We, we've gone over this. We don't need to talk about that anymore. This, uh, Hollywood Reporter were like, it's still unclear whether or not this will be a plot about whether or not this happens. It's like, we've done this already. He's, he's fucking Captain America. <laughs> Captain America, what are we talking about? Uh, and then we're getting uh, Thunderbolt uh, in July. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Oh, you don't know what that is. That's going to be know. the team up of the century with uh, the Winter Soldier, uh, uh, Yelena. Um, who else is in there? Echo. Uh, Fucking hell. Um, <laughs> Oh, Wyatt Russell's um, uh, oh god, really? agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've, I've basically all the how do you get, uh, morally gray people are getting together. I don't think of Wyatt Russell's character as being morally gray. <laughs> well, <laughs> still, he's you gonna, know, he's gonna be in it. So. <laughs> I mean, compared to the others, yes, that's fair. Uh, and then uh, uh, the only thing we know about uh, phase six, which is going to be the closing phase uh, for the multiverse saga, is that it's going to start off with the Fantastic Four, uh, and it's going to finish off with two Avengers two. movies in the again. same movie. Sorry, not movie. Yeah. Yep. I'm which so is... happy about that. I'm like Christ. <laughs> oh my God, I can't. And and you know, just the fact that we're getting so much uh, Jonathan Major stuff that. It's it's already making me very happy. He's fucking great, so I can't wait <laughs> to see him. I'm like, ha. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's Marvel for us. Uh, mm -hmm. The only thing I'm missing, and I I don't know if where is Armor Wars uh, with Don Chiddle that should be coming out as well. <laughs> I think that's already mm -hmm. because I didn't see it in Phase Four, and there's no news that it's it's coming out uh, this year. Um, I don't know. That's interesting, <laughs> isn't it? Because I was thinking about it, like, what, what happened to that? Like, why isn't it on the list? Hang on, I'm doing some Googling. I'm doing that as well. As soon as my phone decides to load the website, I clicked on. You can cut this out. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh... <coughs> well, it says that it's due to release in 2022. But, uh... Yeah. And yeah, it just is coming soon on the Disney Plus website. Okay. So it's still coming then. Which is good. Uh but yeah. That's what I was thinking about. Like, are we getting that? Because we didn't see any trailers, anything. I don't know. Oh well. I wish they would have shown something from uh, the Guardians holiday special. I was like uh, Like it just it, things will come out, just wait. <laughs> I know. But you know I love the Guardians. Mm. Oh. We, we, at, we at least got to see Groot Groot is so cute oh yeah that, I forgot that was happening and I saw the trailer well I didn't see the trailer I saw that the trailer was there it's so funny um, <laughs> it's just gonna be cuteness over <laughs> with Groot and I'm like yes I that's that's what I will need to see. <laughs> I love Groot it's great um, but yeah that's Marvel for us uh, for the next Two years. <laughs> three years? Three even. I would even say three years. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, the Comic Con news. And now we are getting on to Katie's topic. So I'm, I'm giving you the the hosting power. Every time. It's like, it's like we're not even live. And yet you're like, you host now. And I'm like... <laughs> oh, look at me. <laughs> you can do it. Um, uh, so, okay. Now I have to articulate myself properly. Yes. Basically, I feel like I've talked ad nauseum about uh, what it is about storytelling and themes and things like that that I appreciate and like tend to lean towards in stuff. And I wanted to pick your brain about what you like because <laughs> I think we, I think we have. I, I I know a lot of things about the things that I know. I know that you like you know zombie things and I know. Marvel things, all these sorts of things. I don't really have a sense of what kind of a story that you gravitate towards, or whether or not you even think about it on that kind of level, or whether it, it, 
Yeah. So I have a bunch of questions. Okay. And I'm thinking, where do I want to start? Because I did ask you to, to think about this a little yes. bit for me. It's nice. Let's tickle my brain. <laughs> um, so where do I want to start? Because... Uh, all right, well, we'll start with this one because it is the first one I put in. Um, so I said, what, when you're going into a movie, what are the sorts of things that you're looking for? Like, say you're going through Netflix and you're yes. like, I have absolutely no idea what I want to watch. What are you, are you, are you, are you What's more- What's the like first to, thing I'm looking for? Yeah, yeah, what are the things that you're gonna be, you're likely to stop on and go, oh, this could be interesting and you'll investigate <sighs> further or, you know. Horror. If it's if I see you, I, yeah. I always I always go to that section first, like you know. I, but I, why? Well, that's going to be my question a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think because I I thought about this, I never did before, mind you. So you really did pick the tickle my brain. I was like, oh, interesting. Well, um, <laughs> uh, I think it's because. I said this a lot of times, and I I still believe in it uh, uh, fully. That I think horror is one of the hardest genres to nail uh, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, making it into a good movie uh, or even a great one, uh, especially because you can you can easily ruin it mm -hmm. if you use cliches and whatnot. So I am always looking for the exceptional horror movies that can be you yeah. know uh, just very good and and just uh, it's not all about the jump scares or or things that we already know that are coming and whatnot uh and and i i, I think i just really do like the thrill that comes from horror movies like uh, okay. uh, there's you know there's something like i love how they start because let's be fair they all start kind of the same yeah. uh, way in a sense of that you know that you as the audience know that something's gonna come up that's like either supernatural or um, uh, or a serial killer or whatever really uh, the genre is that you're watching or your zombies. threat yes uh, uh, but they don't and they start introducing these you know their lives and and what they are going through at that moment before everything uh, falls apart uh, and and i like to and i like how they can start from that uh, and change it through the whole sense of oh my god the i don't know the ghosts are here or uh, <laughs> or the zombies are here or whatever the ghosts are here. <laughs> uh because uh i think that especially in horrors that uh, deal with the end of the world uh for example or monsters that's that's another uh, great uh genre in there uh i think that's where you can bring out people's true personality in a way uh, that that is just very very interesting for me Mm -hmm. uh always uh and yeah i i think i think that's uh, the main reason why i always look at the horror section everywhere like um uh netflix hbo max uh, uh disney plus has uh stars that uh has yep. horror movies as well so i'm always like i i i didn't know this that i do this every time until i noticed it lately that i'm like immediately like ah, what should i watch let's turn on netflix horror Mm. and if i don't find anything interesting then i just uh go down and start looking for funnily enough uh i start looking for comedies mm. <laughs> don't ask me why uh because i am i am very picky with my comedies so i'm like you know i will probably start one because there's a person in it that i like like sandra bullock for example yeah. uh but if i don't like uh the beginning i just turn it off if I can't laugh at the beginning of a comedy, I'm like, nope, fuck mm, off. And then I will go to war movies because that's my other other go to. What what was that one? Sorry, war. Like you know, war. Sorry, I was like, as you said, war, and I was like, clarify. <laughs> <laughs> war. <laughs> war movies. I understand. Movies, okay, yes. so it sounds like you're kind of living in this very interesting space of particularly with horror movies, looking for something that's actually quite technical as well as emotional. Mm. 
mm-hmm. which is an interesting blend to be looking for at once, I think. Because I think I, I go for... I mean, technically speaking, it should be both when it's working well, right? Yeah, yeah. You want to be able to have something that works on a technical level uh, in storytelling that then therefore elicits the correct emotional response. Yeah. But it seems like you, you have a, an interesting... Um, it's like because obviously the opening of a horror movie well the opening of any movie is set up that's like a very important part you want to be able to bring your audience in and um create the right atmosphere Mm. uh and make sure that they're going to suspend their disbelief for two hours yeah hour and a half yeah however long your movie is um and i think you're right that horror is is kind of the apex of that in terms of that they really have to do a lot of work in the setup in order for the payoff to work properly in the end oh, yeah. um but is there like is there a character motivation for you in a horror movie or is it all based on genre like like is, is it are there the types of people that you find in a horror movie it's a, the kinds of people that you want to be watching more than you would in any other type of film He's stroking her chin. Yeah. <laughs> Playing the great that's, thinker. That's a that's a good question. I never mm. thought about that. This um, is why I wanna I wanna I guess so. Mm. Because my my favorite which is, you know, it, it's gonna sound weird, but it's it's in there in all of them. Uh but my favorite type of uh character in these movies are the ones that uh, don't know about themselves that they can be heroes and mm. they become one by the end uh, by just simply being there for everyone saving everyone and not uh, caring about their own safety uh, I'm talking about Ellen Ripley of course uh, in the Alien franchise uh, I'm, I'm uh, 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 talking about John Krasinski's character in, in A Quiet Place mm-hmm. uh, uh the dad in Train to Busan. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's that was the one I thought of immediately yeah. when you started talking about yeah. it. I'm like, yeah, no, I see it. Yeah. So I, I, I love that character type. Uh, I hate when they die. <laughs> Mind you. They, like, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it's, um, it's a horror movie. So and yet, the, but, I but, feel like that kind of character does have a tendency to end up then martyring themselves. Yes. So yeah, in a way. I think there is something interesting about that in that 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 is the type of character that's the sort of because actually oftentimes your audience surrogate you want your audience to feel like they can be the person who does the heroic act yeah. and be there and and be the the courageous person within the narrative. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, clearly, you're, you're, it's speaking to something in your psyche. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But in in general, uh, I just I just really like. Uh, what it can bring up from people like you know the whole either end of the world situation or ha- uh, haunted house situation or whatever really uh eh, maybe not that one uh that much because that's again a different haunted one. houses are about grief yeah it's the thing yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. a bit more difficult to, to get that kind of a character out of it it, it, um, is, it is that's that's very fair uh but uh going back to train to busan because that's the one for me like that's perfect <laughs> I came level. up on my time hub the other day, the picture I took of the menu when I, I finally sat down to watch the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> I'm so I was like, oh, it's been about a year. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yes, it was a year. Jeez. About a year ago. Yeah. I thought, uh, as of about a week or so ago, I think it was when it came up. So, uh, unreal. Time just flies away. Uh, but uh, that's, that's the perfect one for me uh, on, on every aspect because I think we get to see every possible character types that right. that, that could be there like you know obviously that that is the hero type uh, uh modern socks uh or donley however you like to call him uh character is obviously the badass who's you He's know kind of a barbarian yeah you, you know it, it's in him but it's like <clears throat> It's still like hits so he's hard. he's already <laughs> kind of reached the apex of the storytelling in like in that he's kind yeah. of already got a complete character arc, so he's not really got anywhere else to go other than to maybe then sacrifice himself. Yeah, which That's... is still every time, just tears. 
or just oh. end up getting killed in in some form or another. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's oh, my favorite character to hate. Oh God, uh, the character that turns into the complete asshole. Uh... <laughs> that was gonna be my next question because, like in horror, you often get the person who just to starts hot. <laughs> Because the other side, the flip side, because I find it very interesting. The thing that you uh, feel like you're drawn to more is are the characters that um, become heroic, yeah. have that kind of character arc. But I feel like the opposite end of that in horror is the the characters who um, engage in cowardice, like uh, really lean into "I am only going to look out for myself" uh, in a way that is absolutely going to fuck everybody else over in a major way. Um, does that? Does that it has ruin so much? But like, does that color things for you? Oh, yeah. Do you think that that w you would prefer a story when, in which that character type didn't exist, or do you think it's a necessity for it? I don't think it's a necessity to say it like that. They'll put it like that. Uh, but it's, I think it's a very realistic look. Do you believe that to be a thing? Uh, uh, Again, I keep wanting to use the best of people, maybe, but it, you think that that is an actual reflection of you, the way that they, you think people would be in that sort of situation. Yep. Are you more inclined to think that that person would exist than the opposite? Yep. Interesting. <laughs> yep. I think that's why I, I, I am drawn to the hero characters. Because uh, you just don't think that they exist? No. That's sad. <laughs> I know. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I know it's I, I don't have a happy outlook on life. <laughs> I also think just in general, uh, based on experiences that I, I see around myself, that not not many people would turn into this uh, I sacrifice everything for someone else uh, kind of uh, character or or uh, I will do everything for you or or this one or that one. No. Nah. There are more assholes, I'm afraid. Uh See, I just don't, I don't think I believe that people would be quite so self-centered. Because I think, I think that, that you, there is plenty of examples in history of natural disasters and people coming together and communities coming together to protect yes. each other. Yes, I do believe I don't, that. I'm not, I'm not saying that, like, I, 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 yeah, I'm not saying that, like, neither would exist. I, I'm not saying that, like, it, it's not a, it, all types of people exist, but obviously these types of people are, are so heightened in, I think it's more likely to be way more morally grey than anything we would get in those types yes. of movies if it was real. Yeah, but uh, also I think that fear has an incredible power over people. Mm. Uh, and I, that's why I believe that uh, those who are... I don't want to say assholes. <laughs> uh, but generally not very nice people. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think... Uh, uh, it's very interesting to see uh, them show their true colors because they often turn out to be the leaders of uh, certain groups in these movies. Uh, and, you know, they use uh, manipulation and, and whatnot uh, to get what they want and to survive uh, no matter what the cost is. Um, and I find those characters, while I hate them, so much <laughs> just like it's it's like this rage that's in me whenever i see them like oh, fuck you um that's me watching every movie that do, you, do you think you kind of end up going towards these things then where they they have these types of characters in order to feel vindicated in that um belief like do you feel like there is a sense of you Kind of going, oh, I hate these characters, but now I, but because I'm seeing them represented in this way, I feel more vindicated in believing that people can be like this. I don't think so. <laughs> no, I th because I know I sound very negative, and I know that there are very nice people out there, and I know very nice people myself. Uh, but uh, I. Uh, I think that, as you put it as well, there will be more, if anything like this ever happened in real life, I think there will be more morally grey uh, people around than any of the other two. Like, um, you know, who knows? Can you think of any examples of a movie that does it in that kind of more uh, 
yeah sort of gray area because i feel like horror i mean i guess the horror movies work better on a spectrum of like actually like to dark where people are more likely to fit into character trope archetypes rather than yeah questionable sort of yeah morally gray mishmashy sort of having both side sides to them in certain situations or do you think that that movie doesn't really exist it might not be out there just yet mm. i would put it like this uh the... do you think it's possible to write something like that oh yeah yeah i think so but wait wait i might be lying <laughs> i might be lying wait 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 wait, wait. um uh, it's not really a horror well, I think to be fair, we were only talking about horror because it's something that you are interested yeah. in. It doesn't need to stay in that space. That's fair. Uh, it's like it's it's more like a sci-fi mystery, uh, Korean again. Uh, it's uh, called the Silent Sea. Uh, oh, that one. When, yes. when they go to the moon uh, uh, to re recover files uh, of the research that they had there and whatnot, uh, and that I think that one had. Uh, one of these characters as well, if I remember correctly. I have to rewatch it. It's a very good uh, series, uh, limited series. Uh, I think, yeah, I think uh, actually uh, Gong Gyo, who uh, also played the dad in Train to Busan, is one of the leads in the Silence. And I think his character uh, in Silence is, is is on both ends, basically. Mm. Like, you can really call him an asshole, but you can really call him a uh, hero either. Uh, and I think they they did a very good balance uh, with him uh, in in the series. So yeah, yeah, I I, I would put that character in there. Mm. Uh, I would also say it's not a movie and not a TV show. It's a video game, uh, The Last of Us. Uh, yeah, I think. Mm, I feel like yeah, I feel like Joel's kind of interesting in that. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> I'm playing that around in my head at the moment. It's yeah, no, I think I would agree with that. <laughs> Ryan, it's like I think he's because he he's, he's he is inherently very selfish in many respects, but he yeah. also does. They they come from a actually to be fair because you know and you'll see this when you when you get I put this up behind me because. I think that Black Sails does an excellent job of doing all of these sorts of it. It, I mean, the story is about stories. Yeah. Inherently, it is the whole thing is about the the nature of storytelling and yeah. um, how that serves and sometimes works against you. And mm. the sort of the fact that the, the fact that this is a prequel kind of means that these characters are trapped within a narrative that they can't really escape from. That kind of means that when if they try to move away from certain things other things will bat them back into place that kind of thing mm. and i think silver lives in that sort of space actually the same way that um that joel does and you'll mm. see that i mean silver from like season three onwards <laughs> not season one and two silver it's a very different person fair, fair. <laughs> you'll see that fair. um yeah that's an interesting one all right what have i got here i'm ready for your next question I hope I'm giving you good answers. <laughs> no, this is good. I like this a lot. Um, no, I think, think I will go. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think it's an interesting thing to consider, and I think it's also an interesting thing to 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 if you, if you go, oh, I'm actually, I'm leaning towards this kind of thing because I've got this sort of like outlook on life. I think that's also something that's very important to recognize about yourself, because then you can also make efforts to kind of shift that to be like, well, maybe I can try and see the other side of things maybe maybe yeah. i might be able to find something in this that actually i can see the more optimistic or positive side mm. um believe a bit more in x y and z etc i think it's a it's just an interesting self-reflective exercise in that sort of way all right i think i'll go i will actually just keep going down the list because i think i clearly had a uh a, a through line when i was thinking about this okay. um what's likely to make you connect with something like uh, an aspect of story or character that's likely to, to get you to connect to it. That's the end of the sentence. Connect to it. <laughs> uh, friendships. Oh, interesting. That's... So character dynamic together, uh, uh, bouncing off each other, yeah. right? If if I if it's if it's not 
it's on in a well in a good way i don't know how to say it otherwise mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm i just don't care like so I, you, you're more likely to you have to you you need interpersonal connection yeah. in order to do it personally so it, even if a character is somebody that you're like I really like this person. If there's no real connection with the person with other people, then you've got that. You get nothing out of it. Pretty much. Interesting. I think that uh, my favorite movie, Shawshank Redemption, would not work without Red being there for Andy. Oh. That's just facts for me. Like you know, you need for that movie to work and and be as fantastic as it is. Uh, Andy needs Red, and Red needs Andy. Uh, and I, I think uh, it's actually one of the best examples of, of how great friendships work uh, and how you can build them up uh, to be meaningful and to be just more than, oh, that's a good friendship there. No, it's... it's I think a- Shawshank is a very good example also of recognizing that. And I think more things really need to do this because I, I, I think it's been mentioned many times, I, I'm a big advocate for good character work and yes. I like... Yeah, depth of character and all that sort of stuff and that is, that's a big thing for me but I think a lot of things and as I've gotten older I've, I've, I start to believe this more and more character cannot be separate from story mm-hmm. for something to be genuinely re- really really like good and deep I think you can make things that have good characters um, and all that sort of stuff but then you kind of don't have the, that sense of connection to the story if your, the char- people that you've made don't have anything in common with the story that they're telling, so you can you can still get something out of it, but it's not the same. Yeah. So, but they, I think the thing that most more uh, shows and movies need to really recognize is that your themes need to be reflected within essentially that your characters are narrative devices more than they are people. So they need to have the depth of people, but ultimately they need to also serve whatever story that you're trying to tell. You know what, yeah. Yeah, and I think that the Shawshank is a very good example of that because the the theme of the, there are themes in Shawshank that are about friendship and therefore mm-hmm. the friendship between them feels elevated and and worth something, but to the audience. Yeah. Um, if the theme of friendship wasn't in the movie, then the friendship would be nice to see, but it wouldn't really mean as much. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, so yeah, but I think. Uh, that's why well i don't think i know that uh, uh that's why i have uh favorite tv shows like the band of brothers uh that's also obviously uh based on true events uh um and the true uh, easy company uh uh and their story uh during mm-hmm. world war Two. uh but i think uh spielberg and and tom hanks did such a wonderful job uh translating uh uh, uh, the soldiers' friendship. That's the word for it. It's not going to come to me. Camaraderie? Uh, that's the one. Uh, so beautifully. Uh, I also love it in uh, Saving Private Ryan, which is my other big one. Uh, and it is, and it's even more beautifully done uh, in Hoax or Ridge uh, uh, with Andrew Garfield. Uh, Sounds like that you get that mostly out of war movies and that kind of sense yeah. of connection between people, yes. which makes it it actually film it fits very nicely with the, what you 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 get of horror movies as well is a sense of of um, people helping each other mm-hmm. and being there for each other and also that heroic nature which you get in in, in both of those there's, there's a lot in common with them yeah. is that they are in the depravity of something awful. Meanwhile, you have the beacon of light of 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 people being good to each other. Yeah, I th- and I I don't just think I know that I am drawn to these things because uh, you know this. Uh, it's not a secret. I had horrible friendships in my life, and I was always searching for that. Uh, I as I as I always say, I was always always searching for my red, for mm. my Bucky. Uh, I could literally say any name. Uh, and uh, that's why it's very important for me uh, to have very good, uh, well, at least some kind of uh, friendship <laughs> uh, in in movies and, and TV shows that I can connect to. If it's not there, I can't connect to the movie. And I, I noticed this. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm just thinking about how you're going to lose your mind over Zoom Silver and Flame. <laughs> <laughs> so I, much. I, I might. <laughs> 
I probably will. I just believe you on that. It's I'm still waiting for my Blu-ray to arrive so I can start watching it. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> uh, okay, I think that's a good. That's, that's, that's fair. Let's me let me go on to my next one. Um, I feel like we kind of go on it, gone, gone over this a little bit, but I'll ask it anyway to see if we can come up yeah. with anything else. Can you think of a trope or storytelling theme that will always either put you off something or will. In, I think you've kind of um, described what, what it is, that it would suck, things that would suck you into a narrative, like mm. that you can't really help but engage with. So, like one, the uh, both sides of that sort of spectrum is there like a. Why you you well you and the listeners know one of them that I absolutely hate and I'm just gonna turn it off. It's when they throw up on screen. Well, to be fair, that that's just that's just a. a... It is, but uh, it's it's such. You know, I I have such disgust toward it. No, I I I understand that's, that's instant. That's, that's, that's like, fair. bye. I'm thinking more in terms of like within narrative as opposed to like a visual like thing like that. So something like something that like 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 um when characters very specifically don't communicate to each other in a way that they absolutely have the, uh, every are absolutely able to, and you can't see a reason for it other than like them just trying to tell a certain type of story and it, it, you get annoyed on that kind of level is there anything that's that's me i'm 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 suggesting that one because i said that one always annoys me okay i have one okay I have two i have okay two. please go ahead <laughs> uh the first one don't come at me no one can come at me for this i love strong female characters i hate when you put these unnatural things in their mouths to sound more feminine and more the, the, the Joss Whedon effect <laughs> yes fuck off yeah I don't care I will turn off the movie I'm gonna but you like... can you yeah you can you can really tell uh when it's like oh a man wrote this <laughs> yes yes like it's it, I'm I always gonna bring up this example uh because Sigourney Weaver said it herself and I agree Hundred uh, percent. We can thank uh, Alan Ripley's character uh, to the badass uh, woman trope uh, that started to rise after Alien, and I think Alan Ripley is a perfect example of how you can portray uh, a, a woman being strong and independent and whatnot. Alan Ripley didn't have to say at any point in any of those movies that I am a strong I'm a woman, female character. I can do this and I'm like <laughs> like yeah oh, <No>. okay <laughs> <laughs> fuck off <laughs> like I have a good example of what I turned off because of this I turned off uh, the new Charlie's Angels because of this yeah I, I haven't seen it but that doesn't surprise me too much I was like no <laughs> it just doesn't work <laughs> like what are you doing like you can have strong uh, women characters without them <laughs> saying these absolutely horrible lines just being like extra feminist and whatnot no we don't need it thank you uh, you can fuck off kindly um, <laughs> the other thing uh, I hate and it, it connects to this uh, heavily uh, is making uh, every man except for one and that's usually the main character uh, a complete and other asshole and just a horrible person in your movie and then ju there's just this one very dreamy looking very dreamy looking guy <laughs> who's like who's the perfect specimen and and he's he's feminist and and whatnot and he's he's gonna say all the right things but everyone else is a fucking asshole like i have an example for this one as well because i hate it uh the new wonder woman movie where every person Every single man was like, "I never, I didn't even watch the new Wonder Woman movie because <laughs> everybody was like, it's so bad." I'm like, "Okay, I want." Well, <laughs> I was literally sitting there, and I'm not joking. Uh, in a 15 minute span of the movie, every man that they introduced was a complete asshole that just wants to get into your pants and whatnot, and that was it. And I was like, "It's, it's, it's not." It's not, not good, how the word works. Not good writing. It's not good writing. Like, uh, and then of course the only good man is is Chris. Is Chris, Chris Pine. Pine. It's That's true. It. 
but that's just generally true. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> so these these two things, I know that I will immediately turn off the movie or the series or whatever. I I don't need uh, my badass strong woman to uh, have I think, to repeat lines that are just like extra feminist. I don't. I think that. the only thing that would make me go, like I don't I don't think of that as being like an all encompassing thing because I think that as long as you've got again thematic reasons behind it and it doesn't need to be and obviously you don't want it for every single person within your narrative because then it's just yeah. like fucking hell that you're not you're not writing your characters at this point you're just backing up what you want your your main character yeah. to feel um but i think he, there there's 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 the sort of line of or the sort of period of of um uh gray again i can't think of any other better words but like mm. that kind of muddled in between but you can have characters that have terrible uh traits like women who feel like they have to be yeah, 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 yeah. x y and z kind of a person That's that at least yeah. is yeah backed up by the narrative yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, where yeah. you can go oh i can see how you've become this person yeah 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 i don't mind that yeah i don't no, mind I that I, I i yeah but uh when it's like just in your face and just being like loud as hell and i'm like <laughs> nope <laughs> <laughs> I just can I can I can deal with that because not every uh, uh, man is horrible. Let's and, mm. uh, not and not every woman has to run around saying, ah, I'm, "I'm the I'm you know I'm the strong." Maybe I'm so strong. Ah. <laughs> like, come on, <laughs> we we don't work like this. Thank you. <laughs> but <laughs> like I would much rather you write a pass. <laughs> it would be nice. <laughs> uh, so yeah, these two things are definitely. On mm. top of that list, I think that's like, fair. That's, yeah. that's very fair. Yeah. Um. Is there any? Th- are there any tropes that you 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 are an absolute sucker for? So like, even if it's like a bad movie, but like that trope, like like one trope is present, you're a bit like, oh no, <laughs> I've been sucked in. Uh, if the funny person is actually very funny, yeah, like the the uh, uh, comic relief of the whole thing, yeah, uh, and they can do it in a way where it's you know it's not annoying and and not too much then i'm i'm in i take that one step further if the funny person then has moments of extreme vulnerability where you realize that the funny the funniness is like covering up something deep dark and horrible and you're like oh no i love you now yeah yeah exactly that's like even if it's if it's not great uh otherwise i will stay for that character Uh, yeah that's a that's a hundred percent uh i love I can only bring an example for this because I don't know how to describe him. Well, yeah, put it put it forward and I'll see if yeah. I can describe it for you. Uh, I love the Eddie type characters, the Eddie Monson type characters a lot. Sort of like misfit esque uh, with a whole with a lot of like genuine earnestness. Yeah, but not but not in a way where oh my personality is that I read books. And I don't know. So not you. you're not going for like not like other girls sorts of thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the other thing I hate. I just it just came to me like I'm I'm so you know So special. different quirky. I'm so quirky. <laughs> because I read books and you know <laughs> don't talk to me. And I'm like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. But uh yeah, I because I think they did Eddie perfectly right like that was a very good balance like he's the outcast he's the misfit but you know he's also we just yeah yeah I feel like Eddie kind of lives in the same exactly the same though Eddie's a weird one I don't really know how to describe him I know it's very hard isn't it hmm well I'll have to turn that over for a bit because like yeah I can only think of him as being kind of a sort of the outsidery type I think he also it gets folded in with with the sense of like having to learn what it it means to be a hero within that kind of a narrative. Yes, yeah. Uh, the only thing I didn't like with that is that the second uh, he, he talks did that, about, he died. <laughs> uh, how he runs away. From yeah. situations like this, I knew that he's gonna die, and that's right. gonna be it's, it's the thing the that he's like... not gonna run away this time. Done, and it will kill him. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's. I think that's. It's like huh? it's. It's like I don't. I don't. 
dislike it always. I just think that sometimes it gets used in a way that makes them lazy. Yep. That's my only problem. That's my only problem with it. Well, okay, this next one's a bit um related to that. Okay. Uh in a lot of ways. Yes. Is uh where I kind of I kind of went over a little bit where I said, is there a type of character that you will always fall in for? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean you can please continue. El- yes. Elaborate. <laughs> uh Oh god, yeah. I mean it's it's uh it's definitely because I I think even though they are very different from each other, I think you can just put them under the same roof, uh mm-hmm. basically. Uh it's the Steve Rogers type, mm-hmm. the Eddie Monson type, uh the Steve Harrington type as well. Uh 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 hmm. And then no, it's just cons- I think of Steve as being such a paragon that he he kind of lives out that he's he's so good, you know. In yeah. that I I find it difficult to kind of there isn't a whole lot of gray in in Steve. That's true. That's true. Rogers, not Harrington. <laughs> Rogers, yes, yes. Okay, that's fair. But okay, he's he's the only exception. <laughs> Because he's Chris Evans, so I'm like. <laughs> so at this at this point, you're just saying if the person is Chris Evans, I'm going to be. Yes, <laughs> that's I what mean. I'm saying. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I will also admit that his character is absolutely horrible in the Gray Man, but also he's the most. Uh, it's one of his most fun characters as well. Like, okay. He had some lines in there that I just couldn't stop laughing at. Like, he literally, and I went crazy on this, he literally quotes Babe. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> and I think I'm the only one who realized that, which is very sad for me because I love Babe so much. And there's this ending scene uh, where the farmer says to Babe that, that'll do, pig, that'll do. And Chris Evans says the literal same line, and I was like... <laughs> Yes! I quote that all the time, but mostly it, it's usually because we're quoting Shrek to Donkey, yeah. which is obviously a reference to Babe. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if it's Chris Evans, it's already a win. <laughs> that's understandable, and I, I get you. But like, so I, I think me, and I think this is very painfully obvious if you line them up in any way, it, they have to be in some form or another funny, and then slightly tragic underneath. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, you love that. Both both of those things, you combine them together. I'm like, I'm sold, and I'm done. And they have to. I like I like witty, like, like verbally witty characters. Yeah. You'll realize why I like Jack Rackham so much when you meet him. <laughs> sure, I will. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know how to. Huh. I don't know what character type I like really that I I instantly have a crush on. Uh, well, I don't necessarily mean it's necessarily have a crush on. It's just ones that you're going to always end up like rooting for, or, yeah. or like just sort of adopting into yourself of being like this is my character now. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay, got you, got you. Um, uh, then definitely the misfits again. Mm. I I have to put them here. Uh, and uh, and just genuinely uh nice people like mm. you know that you can really tell that they are these very nice pe- uh, people in the inside of a person um like uh you know eddie is very loud uh and i i think eddie's a really interesting one because you meet him and i i honestly was a little bit put off by him in that opening thing where i was like yeah. oh this is a bit much yeah. you know that kind yeah, of yeah, like yeah. i feel like this guy top. could be a bit insane yeah and then literally every moment after it's like oh no this guy's just this is a massive nut yeah <laughs> bless yeah. But yeah, yeah, I I like when it's it's not that obvious that they are actually very nice, uh, and and they they have genuine feelings and and whatnot. So uh, yeah, I like when they do well. that. <laughs> I'm I I am immediately drawn to those characters. It's fine. Come here, it's okay. <laughs> You're mine now, <laughs> and I love I love uh, the really good uh, well really well written badass women characters just... that's why i like saying that i like angry women because yeah. i think angry like justifiably un- like women that you can tell were written by other women in a way that just sort of they where i'm like yes i get this yeah. feels right yeah yeah i like, like that. women i like um and i like 
I just don't like it when they swear a lot. I know it's not like necessarily the best thing in the world. And sometimes it does feel like forced. Um, so it, you can tell when it's genuine is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. People like people like Margot in 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 Magicians. Yeah. God, I love Margot so much. Yeah. Like just a, like it's, it, any kind of female character like that, I'm like yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I think that's why I have a problem with, you know. You can tell when they're faking it. Yeah. 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 So, and that's why we I'm very... demand higher standards than that. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very high. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's I would put it like this. I think that's fair. Okay. All right, I'm going to switch gears a bit because, okay. um, and I think we kind of covered this a little bit yes. in the the horror section. But do you feel like you get a catharsis out of tragedy, which means that you're more likely to be, to draw be drawn to it? As in, like, are you more like it? Because you've mentioned before, you mentioned yourself, you go straight for the horror movies. Mm-hmm. And if you can't find a good horror comedy, you go for a war movie. Yeah. Do you think that there's something about the the emotional catharsis that you get out of a story like that, in that you are brought into something, you go through, like, there is turbulence in the middle, and that you are brought along with somebody only to have some kind of resolution at the end. Do you think you're more likely to be drawn to something like that because of that catharsis? Do you think it's it you get, like... I like think the, the the emotional roller coaster you get out of it is in itself something to be drawn to. Yeah. Yeah. I like to torture myself. <laughs> I think that those make more interesting stories though, don't you think? Yeah. I mean yeah. I I I find myself having problems with movies that I otherwise like. Uh because there are no stakes in them after a right. while. You want stakes out of yes. something like that. I think it's part of the, one of the many reasons one of the many reasons the supernatural ended up being by the end of it. Because it's like at that point you've like, oh they've died so many times, I don't give a shit anymore. That's I oh, I have to bring it up. Uh that's why uh Jurassic World Dominion was disappointing mm. in a way. Because not one scene in there felt like it has stakes. There are no stakes. No. Because you want, because like we, we were talking about this, if you're going to give a character plot armor, right? You want something else, like if the, then it still needs to be a consequence. The consequence does not necessarily always have to be death. And I feel like that's one of the, the things that we have an issue with in like mainstream cinema, cinema at the moment. Yeah. And that does include, that, that. I mean, mainstream cinema, oh, I can't say cinema. Cinema! <laughs> is marvel movies really at the moment or just anything owned by disney and disney seems to have forgotten that stakes can exist outside of life and death it's like if your character is going to be irrevocably changed in a way that like means that you've lost something along the way doesn't necessarily have to be a person it can be like uh, a a worldview you know Mm. that you need to feel like something has been lost and thus like uh, maybe new something new can be gained by the end of it. I'm sorry. I, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I feel like most movies. I feel like it's part of the reason why I don't tend to get in for movies as much anymore. Honestly, because I feel like they don't tend to have that nearly as much outside of indie storytelling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I uh, what I noticed and it's it's obviously not the same thing that we started talking about uh but uh lately there's this tendency like we are afraid of showing like it's gonna sound weird but love like mm-hmm. genuine love yeah no you're absolutely right there's a like, there yeah. is a um and i'm i did because i i've always i i, I think i make myself quite clear the most of the time when you put sex scenes and stuff i don't give a shit like yeah. i'll turn off i'm like um, yeah, and I think it's because initially when we were having things like that in films or in television, it came as a, uh, a from a voyeuristic place of just being like, and now we're gonna make them fuck, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and you're just sort of a bit like. Oh. <laughs> it's part. I think mean, one of the many reasons that I don't think I connected with Game of Thrones on a particularly big level because yeah. it does feel like a lot of the times sex is used as violence, yeah, or as just like something to be like oh look we're edgy you know yeah but at the same time i think we've so we've we've 
moved so far away from that. We've gone to a purity level where it's like, punch anybody having any real affection for each other. They can't even touch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it, it, and it, it bugs yeah. me. I'm not going to lie. It it's, me too. It's, it's one of the things that bugs me because I'm like, I get it. Like, I think it's very obvious with recent animated movies, for example, because for so long we had this whole trope of uh, the princess and the prince falling in love and, mm. and whatnot. And now they just completely took that out from most of the new animated movies, which is, you know, okay, I get it. But like, can we show some sort? At least? It like, feels like the, if you're going to go for like, I don't, I don't, and I don't think that all stories need to have a love no, story in no, it, no, no, but obviously. like the love can be shown in a different I've actually been thinking about this a lot recently because there is this um, uh, discussion about uh, a romantics feeling a little bit less uh, represented in a lot of ways because they feel like every story comes down to love, yeah, and they don't feel love in the same sort of way. Like even platonic love is not like the ideal, yeah. Um, and I think that the thing that is has been um, lost in translation is that they've forgotten that love is being used as a word instead of care and in care is the word that needs to be put back into storytelling and that you need to show that these people care about each other they don't need to be in love they just need to have a connection that means that they 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 care what happens to them yeah you know and want good things for them in that kind of way mm. um and i don't think that that's necessarily the same thing as or just need to be the same thing as love and yeah. this kind of sense of like, if you can't, if, if they, that love is the the emotion that mean that makes us human. I think it's care that makes us human. I think it's yeah, compassion yeah, yeah. that makes yeah. us human. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's just been in my head for a little while because I keep seeing that, and, and I'm playing with the idea of like, I think care is 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 the word that needs to be used more mm. and mm -hmm. and thought about more. Yeah. In terms of the way that people relate to each other within these things. Yeah. And how they then action themselves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's just, it became like a very weird tendency that unless you're watching like a romantic Romance. movie, it's, it's, it became a little bit like non-existent. In I a way, this, yeah. In a very weird way, like, uh, you know, it, it, it could be there. So why are we just, you know, just pushing it under the rug? Like, I guess I don't know. <laughs> I, do, I do. I find myself wondering sometimes if these these movies um, do chemistry tests anymore because I feel like a chemistry test actually had because it. I feel like they question. they got into this idea that like chemistry tests aren't really needed because they like the person and stuff. But it's like I feel like having a palpable sense of like these two people have, you can feel that yeah, electricity yeah, yeah, yeah. that you want yeah. between characters. Yeah. It doesn't feel like they they look for that anymore, and it yeah. makes things there's there's, there's nothing popping any it, between the people and people anymore. We don't get moments like Nick and Jess's first kiss in in New Girl, which is I stand by one of the I think the best first kiss in like television <laughs> history. So good, <laughs> and yeah, I, it's an interesting. Yeah, I don't know what to really do with it other than like like a, a wish that they could they could go back to yeah an understanding that we want to see people actually giving a shit about each other on a yeah. on a deeper level yeah. yeah 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 so i'm actually always very grateful now if i you know get into a, a new tv series or 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 a movie uh and then it's there <laughs> <laughs> because it's like it's so rare these days that I'm like okay I guess we just let that one go <laughs> uh, it's it's not gonna ruin the experience because I, I won't say that like if, if the movie is still genuinely very good and it's only missing that little bit I'm like eh, okay oh well whatever just want like actionable evidence that the people that you're watching give a shit about yeah. each other yeah. sometimes you get shown a bunch of people and they're like and they're friends and then you're like have they ever once shown that they're friends <laughs> yeah it's, it's very weird uh but yeah uh but back to the original, the original question uh, question uh see that's why i'm weird <laughs> i think yeah it's it's you know i uh i am drawn 
to these things when where you know there are very high stakes and and you can actually I think feel. that's weird i'm sorry i realize i'm covering flint <laughs> i'm just like there you go yeah. sorry yeah sorry captain um uh so yeah I'm, I'm i very much enjoy knowing that you know there will be losses in this one and they're not gonna be afraid to you know kill off uh people uh if if necessary i don't like it when they do it unnecessarily like you know that's why i like when the horror it has to not, yeah i think oh, okay. Bring it back to my background a little bit. One of the things I really liked about this show mm. is that it felt there, and I, I've heard this in, in the podcast I've been listening to, they agonized over every like major person that they killed off. It's like, did this person need to die for this thing to happen within said narrative? And they really, really, really thought about every single one, and they went, if it was a yes, you can tell why like X person didn't make it further than this point because it's like another person wouldn't be able to get to another place that you needed them to go without yeah. that and it, it works in that way because like there's a difference between killing off female characters for male pain yeah. kind of thing um it, on a sort of like on a, on a on a killing charlie and shoving her in the bathtub uh kind of way you know in supernatural where it's just sort of like the only reason you did this was just to make your main character sad yeah but if it has no basis in that beyond that, then yeah. it's pointless and, yeah. and yeah. badly done. Yeah, no, no, I agree. I agree. And and now uh, that you mentioned it, that's another thing that I don't like, is that uh, his, his movies, uh, TV shows, not so much, but movies, uh, when they lose someone and they don't take the time to be sad about it or, or mm. grieve that person i'm always like i i just lost I, I i will lose the connection that i had for that movie previously uh and that's why i was uh, very glad uh when at the end of guardians of the galaxy 2 uh they properly grieved for you uh, yondu uh because previously we had toward the dark world and i fucking hated the fact that uh uh, his mom dies. Uh, we have that whole uh, uh, burial at the scene, uh, uh, scene, and then we cut to a funny scene, and it's like it's already forgotten. We, we let it go, and I'm like, okay, I guess we're mm -hmm. moving on. And then again, it's about stakes. Yeah, yeah. Like, and things need to happen to characters, and they need to matter. Yeah, and I'm like, you know, I, 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 I didn't like this in Marvel. Uh, when when they they started. have a real they have a real habit of doing it yeah, as well, yeah. and I, I I I didn't like it at all, uh, and and I wanted to talk about this uh, because I watched it again. It's it's one of my favorite scenes out of ev any uh, Marvel TV shows uh, is in Hawkeye uh, when um, uh, he talks about Natasha for the first time. And I think it's it's just such a nice little scene, you know, they are celebrating Christmas uh, and it comes up and it's just so genuine and nice and you can actually feel the grief and the pain. And and I was like, I'm so thrilled with that scene. And then they later on do it again uh, at the end of episode six uh, when he tells Yelena. Uh, Watch episode six. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, but that's where he tells Elena, like you know what happened to her sister, mm. and it's just, it's beautifully done. Beautifully done. I need that. I need that. That you know, feel like that people that enter uh, in franchises or TV shows that they matter. That's why I'm fucking angry with the fact that it's only Dustin who gives a fuck about Eddie, <laughs> and you can't convince me otherwise. He's the only one who's mourning. <laughs> And yeah like, that that and I, I mentioned this in our, our review yeah. I, that screams to me um uh we need to uh focus this in on one person because it would be way easier for us to tell the story that way rather than like uh, outside of anything else um no, man. No. I, I don't think that i what i mean by that is that i don't think it's it it yeah. makes sense as a character thing yeah. i think it, it i think that it, it's clearly a very obvious pacing storytelling decision to do it that way yeah so yeah 
which is not to say that it's right, just the way that I can see them doing it. Fair. Um, yeah. I think it's, it's interesting the way you're talking about that, because I realised that almost on the opposite end of that, I like the quieter ones that then go like a lot deeper into the sense of like what grief is and how people react to it and how people move through it and and that kind of there's a couple of things that i I, I, those kind of themes that i really like i like um having characters who leave home and then over the course of the 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 whatever story they're telling realizing that they have no home then to go back to that sort of sense of loss uh in in going oh i i had some a place but that place doesn't exist anymore so i have nowhere to go back to and and what do i do now how do i find my way forward from that and i think grief exists in a very similar place to that of like i had this person and this person doesn't exist anymore how do i how do i move forward with not having this thing that was constant in 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 my life i think this is just interesting i don't know i've on a level i haven't quite figured out why that that appeals to me just yet <laughs> fair that's fair um well we've we've got a, to our hour and ten but i did have one last question yes which kind of encapsulates what we've just done today okay. where i said um and i feel like the answer to this was no but i'm hoping that the answer will be now uh i'm going to start trying to do that uh where i said do you think um do you think about any of these things when you're watching anything or do you think it's a pointless exercise now i will <laughs> think about Good. these things uh i think you know in some things yes i i i thought about it like you know that but, oh, I think uh, not, say. in some things a... it is a pointless exercise <laughs> no 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 and uh, but uh on a big scale like this like just thinking it through i don't think i have uh, i've ever done it mm. uh, but uh yeah it's it's very interesting uh to learn about yourself this way as well uh because you know i i uh, i for one always wondered uh why i love horror movies uh, so much and i think it's not just because it's so hard to find very good ones and i i find that as a challenge you know like i think there's always a part of that as well that, just because that, 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 that you that's get that. there's a sense of joy yeah. out of that part of it as well that's that's you know that's very much true uh but uh yeah there's there's more to it i now know i now know that there's there's just more to it than that victory, victory! <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah it was that this was very very fun good I your cash questions thank you and uh yeah i think about these things all the time I this is why do. i asked <laughs> I, am, I am constantly thinking about these things it's part of the reason why if i can stop thinking about these things when a movie is on uh i tend to be like it was good okay that's fair yeah that's what we talked about with tour as well yeah this yeah. is what i'm saying yeah. but i think that tends to be the thing in with happier films yeah, because yeah, yeah. I think I think because I obviously want to be thinking about these things so much. Though, mm. if a happy film can get me just to shut my brain off and and, and enjoy it in in that kind of sense, then I'm like, great. This is just going to be something I'm going to be able to enjoy on that kind of like very surface level. Because I don't get very many of those. Oh, yeah. I like the better movies. Did you learn new things about me then? <laughs> I feel like I did. Yeah, okay. I think I did. Ah. Do you feel like you learned new things about yourself? Yes. <laughs> Good. That's that was that was the more important thing. <laughs> okay. uh, all righty then. Uh, this was us today. Uh, Kate is not gonna be with us next week. I'm out of the country. She's out of the country. Uh, but we're gonna have the lovely pagan come in. Uh, uh, and you know she's gonna play not Katie, but uh. <laughs> No, should she? She should be herself. Yeah, but uh, she, she, we, we, we will have a celebrity coming on because she, she's. Oh yeah, she's she's doing well with herself now. <laughs> so I will, I will have to treat her. <laughs> I love you, Pagan. Um, yeah, so she's coming in. Covering for me. <laughs> she's coming in, uh, uh, replacing Katie for just one episode uh and then katie's gonna be back we don't know what we're gonna talk about once she's back but we're gonna figure it out something fun again i guess so yeah uh mm-hmm. and this was us for today and we love you all thank you